Walking down the high street in Japan at night, there are loads of neon signs that glow with a range of colors. Their colors depend on which gas is in each glass tube. Neon is a noble gas that can glow orangey red. Helium glows pink. Argon is blue. We can't even mix these gases together to produce intermediate colors. But that still doesn't explain how a gas can produce light. Let's simplify things first by looking at a hydrogen atom, which has one proton and one electron. Around a nucleus of an atom, there are energy levels that the electron can occupy. These energy levels are discrete, or we can call it quantized, which means that there are fixed values for energy and the electrons cannot be anywhere in between. I'm going to flatten these circles out because conventionally, we like to represent the energy levels like this. We call this the ground state, n is equal to 1, because it has the lowest energy level that the electron can occupy. All the other states are known as excited states. Where n is infinity, that means the electron has gained so much energy that it leaves the atom becoming ionized. If an electron is in the ground state, we can promote it to an excited state by giving it some energy. After an electron has been excited, it will only stay in that particular energy level for a finite amount of time before it spontaneously relaxes back to a lower energy state. At that same time, the electron will emit a photon. The photon carries an energy equal to the energy difference between the two levels. And what's great about this is that the electron doesn't have to relax back to its ground state directly. For example, if the electron has been excited to where n is equal to 3, the electron might relax down to n is 2, emitting the first photon before it relaxes again to emit a second photon. So these photons allow the elements to emit a range of frequencies and wavelengths. And if the wavelengths correspond to the frequencies within the visible light's region, we will be able to see the glowing light. We can work out each photon's wavelength if we know exactly what these energy levels are. By convention, the energies are given in electron volts and written with a negative sign in front. And when the electron is ionized, the energy is zero because it no longer experiences the attraction to the nucleus. Let's just zoom in to the lowest energy levels to do some calculations. If the electron relaxes from 3 to 2, the magnitude of the energy difference is 1.89 electron volts. To calculate the corresponding wavelength, we can use this equation that involves Planck's constant, E is hc over lambda. Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. This is the photon's energy here, which needs to be in joules. I can rearrange this to make the wavelength the subject. To convert this into joules, I'll multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. So this photon here produces light with a particular wavelength of 658 nanometers, and that is within the range of red visible lights.